Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Coffee with Chris. We have a special guest today, Dr. Megan James. She is a physical therapist and a mother runner, and she also is preparing for her marathon race on Sunday. So give her some extra love in the comments um, to cheer her on as she gets excited to head out right after this um, to, uh, to get coordinated and set up for her race weekend. Um, but today we are really excited to be talking about jogging stroller mechanics. We both get a lot of questions about this, treating our mother runners and supporting them. And we decided that we would collaborate and join forces and go over some um, common questions that we get asked and to also share just kind of some tips that you can coordinate with yourself, both body mechanic tips as well as stroller mechanic tips and bringing those two together to help you um, kind of minimize aches and pains that we see that are really common as well as to improve your efficiency while you're running because jogging with a stroller is no joke, mamas. You guys are basically pushing a weighted sled the entire time. So getting uh, getting some tips on how to do that most effectively and to be able to utilize your mechanics um, to your advantage is really helpful, both from an energy conservation standpoint as well as from an injury prevention standpoint. So. First off, thank you, Dr. Megan James, for being here and for volunteering your time. And uh, we just really appreciate it and being able to help us um, talk through these pieces together. So thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited yeah. about that. <laughs> That'll be awesome. Um, so first off, we're gonna kind of go through it's just some general kind of stroller um, setup mechanics. Um, and then we'll go into body mechanics and kind of tie it all together. But as we go, if anybody has any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to drop them below so we can see those and we'll be able to um, kind of answer those two as we go if anything comes up. So let's dive in. So first off with our stroller setup, one of the first questions I often get is how, how do I know what angle to put my handle at in order to help me be successful? So Megan, how do we determine that? Okay. so. It depends on your stroller. Some strollers don't have an adjustable handle. Um, but if you're in the market, if you're looking for a stroller, I definitely recommend finding one with the adjustable handle. Um, yes. Especially if you have a mom and a dad or a mom and a mom who are going to be pushing a stroller. Um, or if you and have different heights doing the stroller too. So um, it's yeah. definitely really nice to have this one goes all the way up and it comes down really far. Yep. So if you have that ability to change your handle, do a quick test of where you would be comfortably running without the stroller. And about that height where you're coming forward just past your hip is where you want the stroller handle to be. Yeah. Agreed. So it's a little bit and below your waist. Um, but if you run up here, it's going to be just a little bit higher. Um, so really based yeah. off of your natural stride without the stroller and then try to meet the stroller to you. Agreed. And this too is very height dependent and also a bit kind of dependent on how long our arms are. So each body is gonna be a little bit different. So it's not um, as clear cut sometimes. So like Megan said, kind of setting yourself up near the stroller and then just kind of check where does my natural swing kind of happen and sort of setting it up to be um, kind of similar to that. You also want to think like if you were pushing and not running, but just pushing a sled, what angle would you naturally kind of want to have your hands at? And that's also another good kind of gauge as to where a comfortable level is for that handle. But like Megan was saying, I like to kind of recommend usually a little bit downward on that angle um, for most people, just because that kind of sets us into a little bit of a natural place. We want to have that natural kind of elbow bend if we're too high, then we tend to be running like shrugged up the whole time. And then we have a lot of neck and um, kind of upper back discomfort. Um, and, and then if we're too low, then that also doesn't allow us to be pushing most efficiently. And that'll also often result in people kind of pitching their upper body forward to like lean into the stroller and things like that, which also affects our efficiency. So sometimes it's a little bit of playing back and forth to see what angle fits best. And also to Megan's point too, if you have uh, multiple people in your family that are gonna be using the same stroller, having that adjustable handle is really helpful to accommodate everybody's different body heights and arm length. So just keep that in mind if you are in the market for one. Um, I also am a pro adjustable handle um, vote. So something to keep in mind. 
But if you don't have an adjustable handle, it's not the end of the world. You True. You adjust instead of the stroller yeah. adjusting. But ideally, it's a little bit lower and you can make the stroller work for you. Totally. Other common question we asked, front wheel being locked or do we keep it on the swivel? What's the answer? <laughs> this is a, <laughs> depends on the back. So I'm gonna flip, am I gonna get it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, perfect. All right, so this is on the swivel right now, it's unlocked. Um, and I don't know if it's going to, there it is, now it's locked. So the safest way to run with a stroller is with it locked. Um, sometimes that's really hard and really awkward if you're doing a lot of turns um, or if you're running in a race and there are people around, it's, it's harder to steer for sure with it locked, but it's definitely the safest option. Um, if you have it unlocked, you can, if you catch um, a crack in the pavement or the sidewalk or a stone, or you have to make a quick adjustment in your path, that wheel will catch and then it skids and tips and you're all over yeah. the place. Um, right. So it is harder though to steer it without, uh, or with it being locked, it's definitely harder to steer it. Um, yeah. So personally, I don't always lock it. Um, my driveway is stone, so I start and end my run with it locked. Otherwise, we would never make it down. <laughs> yeah. uh, once we're out on the road, I know that it's mostly even and flat road, so I unlock it, but um, it's not the safest. So it definitely requires a higher attentional demand. You can't just be off, you know, looking at the scenery. If, if you have your wheel unlocked, you have to be very attentive to what's in front of you. And if your kid is shifting weight, there's another factor that might tip it a little bit. So um, I recommend trying it with the wheel locked because that is the safest way. Um, but practically, it maybe isn't always gonna work. We have to also adjust here, and this is, yes, a bit of a personal preference. Again, to Megan's point, safest recommendation is to keep it locked. Um, but in certain cases, sometimes in different terrain, and also, you know, depending on kind of your comfort level with your environment and what type of path that we're on, I think that this can be a little bit subjective. So, you know, using your your best decision for what you're kind of doing but i will sometimes recommend that my clients um that they just run with the stroller and test both and see what feels good to them without having their kiddo inside and sometimes i'll say hey throw a kettlebell or something like in the seat just so that you can feel the weight but without the concern of your little one being in there and play around and see how you feel based on your most common path just to sort of get an idea and then that way too, you can get a little bit more confidence of how does this feel with different things. But yeah, general consensus from a safety standpoint is wheel locked um, for the front. Cool. And then the another question we sorry, now, go ahead. Sorry, um, have like a partial lock. So okay. it reduces the swivel, but it's not completely locked. Got um, it, okay. I think that's just a kind of a newer model thing. Uh, I don't have that, I would be, that would be great to have. I think that's a good happy medium, but not that so. might be something that they're kind of adapting just based on this type of feedback and needing, needing yeah. kind of a hybrid in between. Right. Cool. Other common question we get asked a lot is about using the car seat in the jogging stroller. Tell us your thoughts, Megan. <laughs> okay, so I have my adapter. Cool. It's a little dusty. We haven't used it in over a year. <laughs> so really easy that it just snaps right in um, and you can just leave it there so we only have one stroller we use it for walking and running and errands um, great for going to the farmers market and loading up the bottom yep. <laughs> so, a little sidetrack there um, <laughs> so we just left the car seat adapter on because we would pop her out of the car and put her right in there and then when we were running, um, 
she used it kind of as a foot rest, which was like a perfect height for her. So leave right. that car seat adapter on, okay. but if you run with it, so imagine we've got our car seat on here now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <It's very fit. laughs> um, so in an infant car seat, it's going to be sitting up here, actually. It'll okay. be a little higher. But yeah. It's going to be sitting right on top of here, and it's bigger. And your kid is, your baby is on top of the car seat, too. So um, as you're running, your um, the weight distribution on the stroller is shifted. So the center of gravity is higher when you have Correct. the car seat on it. So just like the comparison of a wheel locked and unlocked, any little variation in the terrain, and you're very likely to tip over. Yeah. It's top heavy. You've got this bulky car seat with a baby on top of these three little wheels. Exactly. Uh, so very likely, it's very prone to tipping when you're running. But great to have it for walking. So um, I like the, uh, the flexibility of having that adapter on. Agreed. But, um, it's also, you're adding so much weight. When you add a, a car seat on there, you're working yeah. hard enough to push the stroller and the kid. So don't make it any harder for yourself. <laughs> um, aside from the safety piece, just it's extra weight. You don't need it. So as soon I, as you can able to get up unsupported, that's somewhere in the six to nine month range. Yes. Yep. Go in the go in the stroller just as is. Um, and we, you know, your kid might still be in the infant car seat when you go in the car, but he or she would be safe knowing that he can sit up on his own. Um, he, he can go in the stroller for a run without the car seat. And that's, that's fine. Agreed. Yeah. The top heaviness is just something that, you know, we need to be aware of and knowing, yeah, the, the potential risk of that tipping over faster. And Megan, you made a great point too about the extra weight of a car seat. So basically on average, and this will kind of vary depending on the make and model, both for a jogging stroller as well as for our car seat, but the average weight of just an empty stroller is about 25 pounds. And then the average weight of a car seat, I think is pretty close to that too. So if you're talking already, we're at like 50 pounds and we haven't even put little one in there, and then you're pushing that amount of weight for however long you're going on your run. That's a lot of work. So we also have to have a really good foundation of strength too, to be pushing that and thinking if our baby is still at a point where they're that small and needing to be in the car seat in order to be in the jogger safely and how soon postpartum we are too, we need to make sure that we have enough good base of strength in order to be supporting that because oftentimes we're not quite there yet and that's a lot to be pushing over however long you're planning to run. So also keeping in mind what your body needs in addition to um, the weight of all of the gear and then add baby weight on top of that. So, you right. know, we're probably somewhere between a 10 to, you know, sometimes 20 pounds at that point on top of it. So pushing something like 60 to 70 pounds is a lot. And add on, if your baby is still that little and needing the infant seat, um, you potentially as a mom may not have returned to your pre baby weight either. So you've got extra weight on your body and then you're adding mm -hmm. on all of this other stuff. So agreed. Be kind to yourself. Don't make yourself work any harder than you have to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Plus nobody's going out without baby gear in the stroller. So there's other right. stuff we're putting down below and all of the things. So right. yeah. <laughs> taking into account the whole picture so yeah but general that. That good stuff. don't yeah. use it in the car seat if you're gonna run <laughs> yeah walk around the block those types of things get some fresh air and all of that and then jogging stroller once we're somewhere between that good head control for a little one which on average is usually between that kind of six to nine month mark cool yeah all right let's talk about steering okay Common question that we get asked a lot, one hand or two hands? What's the answer? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> okay, so again, we'll start at the safest way. 
Yeah. And now it's two hands. Two uh, hands. Turn it here. There we go. Okay. So two hands with a wide grip. You'll have, um, you'll actually have decent control. If you push down just a little bit, you'll feel like the shocks of the stroller. Yeah. Push down just that little bit. You've got decent control to stir, to to turn and steer a little bit. Yeah, or to self-correct if something starts to get a little wobbly. Right, right. Um, so definitely two hands, safest, best control. Again, we look at practicality and comfort. Um, it is awkward to run holding something and you don't have your arms now in that nice swinging motion. Right, because we normally have that kind of rotation of our upper body to counter the rotations happening from the lower body. So what we call that thoracic rotation. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. So you can yep. get a little bit of that just at your shoulders as you run. You don't. You only need a little bit to offset your hips and your pelvis. Right. So you can get that from your shoulders, but it is more awkward, definitely more awkward. Yeah, it takes some getting used to. Yeah, yeah. So most people opt for the one-handed method. So somewhere in the middle, and this yeah. often pairs with the wheel unlocked too. If you have the wheel locked, it's pretty much impossible to run with one hand on the stroller. Um, you will just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where you'll end up, but it won't be where you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> it, so. Yeah, it, it creates another challenge in terms of yeah the coordination of all the pieces yeah yeah so one hand i think is probably the most common most popular way um but just keep in mind again that you're going to lose some control because you'll probably have the wheel unlocked um right. so you need to be that much more in tune with what's going on on the ground in front of you and oncoming yeah. traffic um yeah and trying to pay attention to your kid in the stroller. <laughs> so it, it um, yeah, it, it, safety wise, it's not ideal, but you have to balance what works and what's recommended. So, um, yeah. but I, I would just like with the wheel position, try it both ways and you might find that it's okay and you do all right with, with the two hands and that's great, stick with it. If you can do it, mm -hmm. do it. Um, so there's a there's some research that talks about the energy cost of um, three different methods actually of hand position. One is two hand grip. One is one in the middle, and I think they did this alternating hands. And the other is to push and follow. So you give your stroller a little push, and then you kind of chase after it. Yeah, um, which I think is wild i don't i've never tried it it seems really scary to me <laughs> that would seem a, a little precarious to me if i had a little one in a stroller but to each their own i've totally seen moms do it and they have have their system down so yeah. you know it, it takes practice and whatever kind of feels most natural for your system and things but yeah. yeah i think always having at least one hand of contact on the handle um is definitely a preferred from a safety standpoint right right and the, in terms of energy cost, um, just running with a stroller alone is an increase of 5 to 10% of energy Yeah. Um, if you're maintaining the same speed. Right. So then comparing, if you have two hands on, it's actually the lowest on the lower end of that, two hands on the stroller. Um, one hand is somewhere in the middle, and then the push and follow, push and chase method is actually the highest energy cost. So two, two definitely the best energy-wise and safety and control. Um, Agreed. One, one hand on is that kind of meet in the middle type of thing. Yeah, and I think too, speaking kind of to that energy standpoint cost situation, it's also a certain amount that you know we have to get used to running with a stroller or basically a weighted sled versus if we've only been used to running by ourselves and not having that extra piece of equipment with us there's some energy cost that's just going to happen by getting used to and kind of fine-tuning your efficiency and right. also as your body gains more strength 
that kind of can sometimes shift too. So two hands, I always recommend, especially for that initial, like getting ready, you know, and starting your run, or let's say if you're starting to go up a hill or anything like that, I always recommend two hands because that just gives your body the ability to stack better and then to be able to have that um, good push off and momentum. Once you kind of start to get into that cruising speed, at that point, I feel like energy conservation could arguably be about the same, um, one hand to two hands. Um, and if you are doing one hand, having it more in the center of the bar and then your body a little bit off to the side so that you can kind of swing that other arm a little bit more freely that's not attached to the bar so that you can kind of get a little bit of that natural momentum. And then I always recommend switching sides. So not running your entire um, time only with the same hand, <clears throat> excuse me, on the bar. So you need that kind of, uh, you know, switching off in order to equally distribute your workload over your run, as well as not to develop too many asymmetrical, you know, kind of strength situations. If you're always used to pushing on one side, that's going to kind of create an imbalance in terms of the body's ability to load. So um, just kind of keeping all of those kind of things in mind. Yeah, it's, a lot to, it's a lot to keep in mind. But mm -hmm. once, once you figure it out, um, you, it, it's really not, it's not that bad. <laughs> you, get, you get into a groove. It takes practice like anything um and stuff and so and a little bit of this too is going to be trial and error for your own system of what feels good for your body so know that these tips and things are are just general suggestions and then you know exploring them over time and also not trying to make all of these changes all in one run either like pick one piece at a time to sort of focus and practice on for i usually say about a week or so mm -hmm. kind of get that dialed in before you start to adjust another thing yep cool yeah right those are the general things about your stroller setup. We're gonna to shift to body setup. How do we organize your system while you're pushing the stroller in order to help you be most uh, efficient with your run and also to minimize common aches and pains? So one of the first things that um, I wanted to kind of discuss and share here too is talking about how, where do we keep the stroller? I see a lot of times people will have it really close. I'll see sometimes people are really far extended Dr. Megan, what do you recommend in terms of that distance um, when you're for yourself as well as for your runners? So the, the distance should be enough that you can keep your normal stride. Um, okay. So and that's not very, uh, so it's hard to say, you know, a blanket statement for <laughs> because it is individualized. Um, if you've got somebody who's like four foot ten and teeny tiny legs, they can be a little closer because their, their stride is typically shorter. Um, if you've got somebody who's six foot four and their legs are like a mile long, you're gonna need a little more space so you're not kicking the, the back of the stroller. Right. But if you find yourself, if you have to um, come out to the side, like holding on, like you said come out a little bit to the side so you can swing, which I agree with. Um, just so you're not hitting the stroller every time. Agreed. But if you are way out to the side, to the point where you are basically running next to your kid, mm -hmm. um, your your stride is probably too far out front to begin with. Your stride's definitely too long. Yep. Yeah, and you're probably not getting anything behind you. So we want to correct enough distance that you're not kicking it. Oh, I'll pull my camera down a little bit. Um, so we don't want to be kicking it every step, but if you're kicking, Correct. you're either too close or your stride is too long. So, um, yeah, this is kind of a, a sidetrack here, but it's a good point though, because that over striding basically means that, you know, we're not getting enough push behind us. So we're not getting a good enough transfer of that energy behind to propel ourselves forward and then as our leg comes through as we're hitting the stroller obviously that starts to you know make our efficiency go down but also even if we were over striding that way without the stroller in front of us that means we're actually creating basically a braking force every single stride that you're taking so it's kind of like if you have the emergency brake on in your car and you're accelerating the whole time 
you're you're losing efficiency by this kind of break and push off, break and push off. So we want that stride to stay relatively underneath us as we're striking the ground and really getting that push off behind us. Thank you, Megan, for demonstrating. <laughs> and also to hear what I kind of use as a way to gauge this also is further up the chain. So I like to kind of recommend that you have a, a gentle bend in your elbow yep. from you know the bar. So if you're totally extended with your arms, we're too far away. If you're, you know, have your elbows really, you know, close into you and you have a much smaller angle from here with your forearm to your um, upper arm, then you're likely too close also. So I like to kind of say like, stay within sort of like about a 70 ish degree angle um, so that you can kind of start to sort of get close to the stroller, but not to a point where you feel crowded, but also that you can kind of maintain that natural um, foot turnover underneath you. So yeah. again, this is gonna be a little bit subjective based on body size. So kind of checking in and sort of seeing, can I maintain that stride fairly well underneath me? I'm not hitting the stroller. My elbows are staying kind of just in a relaxed sort of semi-bent position. Then we're usually in a pretty good place. Yep. And then kind of moving up the chain again, um, we want a little bit of a forward lean. So right here, I'm way back and I'm leaning forward right. and my elbows are extended. So yes. <laughs> this could also be really, um, uh, you're setting yourself up for a face plant here. <laughs> also. <laughs> yes. <So. laughs> um, but if you're right here, now we're almost like leaning back. So obviously these are two extremes. I've never seen anyone run exactly like this, but um, you're setting yourself up now to not be able to get anywhere with your leg. You're really grabbing the stroller. So like you said, um, just a soft bend in your elbow. So you're relaxed, your shoulders are down. Um, my elbow is right about at my waist and it's pretty, it's close to my body. As yep. um, just, just a little bit of a forward lean and now I'm ready to go. Exactly. Yeah, perfect. The other piece too here, kind of speaking to this setup is also we wanna make sure throughout our run that we're keeping our rib cage stacked over our pelvis. So two common issues I find with my runners too is we complain of back pain and neck and kind of upper shoulder pain. And this is often due to when we have lost that connection with our pelvis and we start to use our low back to push off and or we're using our arms way too much for the push instead of thinking about our arms as a tool and the push still coming from our pelvis and that kind of core pelvis stability section. So when I say rib cage to pelvis, I'm gonna have Dr. Megan kind of show the two extremes here. So Megan, if I am kind of just using my back and my pelvis is tipping forward kind of into that anterior tilt position, right? So now we have a situation here and then if Megan kept that and started running, she's gonna really be using a lot of her low back here to be stabilizing herself as well as to be helping with the propulsion of her leg behind her instead of her hip. We really want our glute and our hamstring to be helping with that propulsion and we want that low back to stay relatively long, which means that our core and our rib cage and that front part of our body is staying connected. So kind of those cables in the front, okay? The other challenge that I see people sometimes is we kind of break and start to lean forward as we get tired. And now we're, you know, challenging the system here and we're using a lot more of our shoulders and like the upper body to kind of push. And that's gonna create a different challenge in terms of the upper body being overloaded. And again, we're not being able to utilize our core connections as effectively. So we wanna also be able to adjust our body and stroller setup to a place where we can be most successful to maintain that rib cage to pelvis connection for the longest amount of time for our run. This also means we need a lot of core strength <laughs> in order to do this. So yes, it's a core workout. And this is also why strength training, especially for your running, but especially for running with little ones is, a, is really important because we need to be maintaining that base of strength in order for us to have the efficiency to maintain that, maintain that over our runs while we're pushing um, our, that extra weight. 
Yeah, and I, I think just kind of as a general statement that your running mechanics with and without the stroller shouldn't look all that different. We Correct. don't want anyone to be running like this even without the stroller or, or mm -hmm. hunched over. Um, right. We want a nice stride opening up in the back, not coming way out in front, arms should be relaxed. So the same principles apply. Now we're just adding in this bulky thing in front of you <laughs> and some extra weight to push down the road. <laughs> Correct. So you have to think about it a little more because it's not as natural, but the mechanics overall in general are really pretty similar to running without the stroller. If, yeah, if we have already a challenge maintaining good mechanics while we're running just by ourselves, that's a, a good indication that I recommend my runners were, were not yet ready to be done pushing a load. So running with a stroller is more advanced. Mm -hmm. And we need to keep that in mind when we are training and things or thinking, hey, if we know that we can maintain good mechanics just when we're running by ourselves for three miles, that doesn't automatically mean that we're ready to push a stroller for three miles, for example. So we also need to be gradual in terms of our loading using the stroller versus the distance that we're gradually loading on when we're running by ourselves, because those are two different situations in terms of how much load we're having to push. So. This is another piece I often you know, talk about with my runners, and I'm sure, Megan, you discussed this too, in terms of we have to really dial in our mechanics by ourselves before we start to think about using the stroller and loading and running and logging miles with, the, with extra weight. Yeah. Because extra weight is not going to help us improve our mechanics if we don't already have a good base unloaded. Right. So gotta master that part first before we add the extra load. So this is also another piece that, you know, we need to add that slow, gradual increments as we're getting back to our, our running by ourselves, as well as using that same kind of general gradual guideline when we are starting to introduce stroller running um, yep. and all those kinds of things. We think of it as, yep. as compare it to strength training. So if you are learning how yeah. to do a deadlift for the first time in a gym, mm -hmm. we do these yep. all throughout our day anyway, but if you're really, yeah. this is your first time learning how to do it as an exercise, you're not going to do it with 100 pounds on a bar. You're going to mm -hmm. do it with holding a broomstick where you have really no weight. You get the movement. You learn that movement. And then you add a little bit of weight. And then maybe after a few months, you can do 50 pounds but for two reps. And then a year later, you can do 100 pounds with four reps. So same idea applies with the strollers that we, we know yeah. the movement and the mechanics. Now we're going to add in the weight of the stroller and a baby. And mm -hmm. we need to start that at one minute. And we do yep. a minute of running, three minutes of walking, and then repeat. Yep. <laughs> and over yeah. time, you're building up your, your tolerance, your ability, your strength and endurance, all that good stuff adding on the volume, adding on the intensity. You're naturally adding weight as your kid gets older. So you yeah. don't have to add anything. They naturally take care of that for you. <laughs> yeah. So it, it just, like you said, just reiterating that it needs to be gradual. You need to prepare your body for it. You can't just go out and do it and expect that it's going to be okay. Um, with that said, there might be a time where you just you have no choice but to run with the stroller and maybe you're not really ready for it but it's just one day and it's an easy recovery run or you know it, it's just a mile okay we can handle one day and we can kind of figure things out from there but if it's going to be something that you consistently do and want to really improve upon then you've got to lay the foundation and be prepared for it and not just Go out and do it. Right. Or do the exact same distance that you cover solo and immediately assume that our body has the tolerance already to then be covering that same distance with a with an extra load. Right. So or we have to kind of work both of them up in individually. Yeah. If you if you have a five mile loop and you do it at nine minute pace without a stroller, and you yeah. go to do that loop at nine minute pace 
with a stroller. Now you're probably getting out of your easy run and you're into more of a threshold with the amount of energy you're, you're adding on there. So yeah, don't pay attention. It's to just, just totally a different ball game. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I know I've read this too in some studies and things, and this is not a hard and fast rule, but basically I've been kind of, some of the research sort of talks about the idea that from an energy expenditure standpoint, um, you know, running with, you know, a stroller, basically, let's say that you ran two miles with a stroller, basically add an extra half mile onto that in terms of energy expenditure. So it's really like running two and a half miles um, and things like that. So just anytime, you know, people are always, I know my runners get concerned where they're like, my pace is so much slower with the stroller. And I'm like, yes, but you're also pushing a ton of weight. So yes, our pace is going to go down, but that doesn't mean that you are not performing well, your body's just having to adapt and it's a totally different energy expenditure when we're doing that. So having anywhere from, you know, a, a minute and a half to two minutes slower than your solo pace is, is not unreasonable and not unexpected. And I think sometimes that's also another um, big question mark for a lot of people of being like, what, what's, why is this happening? Um, and then add on, like, let's say if it's hot or you're running in humidity and all of these other things too, that are going to affect our cardiovascular system differently as well. So just keep those pieces in mind, um, when you are running with your stroller and little ones that, um, use it more as a way to maintain fitness, get out and get some fresh air and things like that. Um, but I always say like, don't worry so much with my runners about your pace and all those things. Just worry about keeping your body, you know, in a good position, enjoying it getting out there, having fresh air, and then save the your other workouts, your interval training, your tempo runs, all those kinds of things. Worry about pace then when you just have to organize yourself versus having to manage all the other pieces. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, cool. Dr. Megan, thank you so much for helping us with this and talking through this. I hope you all found this helpful and that we were able to answer some of the most common questions and things about stroller setup, body setup, bringing those two together so that you guys can keep logging your miles as effectively as possible as you're bringing your little ones out on the road with you. Um, and if you have any other questions or comments or anything like that from anything we talked about today, feel free to drop those in the comments below too. And Dr. Megan and I will um, be able to reply and respond to those as well. Um, and um, I just want to thank Dr. Megan again for taking time today. Please show her some love and thank her too for um, joining us today. And um, like I said in the beginning, if you didn't catch it, Megan is running a marathon on Sunday. She's going to crush it and um, show her some love for that, too. So, Not with Megan, <laughs> yes, no stroller, just by herself. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Megan, thank you again. Have a wonderful Friday, everybody. And um, we will catch you next week on Coffee with Chris. All right. Thanks, Take care, Chris. guys. Of course. <laughs> Take care, guys. <laughs>